Hey folks, and welcome back to another video of mine. Thank you again for your support. I really appreciate it. I really do. But in today's video, I decided that I wanted to quickly give my views on how to trade high impact news. Because yes, I do in fact trade high impact news, but probably not in the way that you think I do. A lot of people out there seem to know how to predict the news event in which direction that it's going. There's no way to convince me that these people know where it's going or can predict it in any way. In my opinion, it's completely gambling. I would never do it. So what I do is that I trade the minutes after the initial move has happened. You know, what many people don't understand, because I don't think ICT has ever taught this, and I don't think I've heard anyone else mention this, Maybe someone has, but not that I'm aware of. So don't come at me if anyone has. I'm sorry. But I just haven't heard of anyone that mentioned this. Um, but data, highs and lows, you know, uh, I call them data highs and lows, are very significant. I have noticed this through countless of back tests um, of these high impact news events. And what I mean by the highs and lows are very significant is that you can actually trade the highs and lows of the news event candle you know you wait for a stop run on either the high of the low of the news event candle and then you look for your entry in the opposite direction targeting the opposite data higher low okay so firstly let's let's establish which high impact news events that i have seen this work on more often than not we have nfp CPI and unemployment rate. Whenever any of these news events are released, I start looking for this setup to occur. Uh, just last week, I traded the uh, very high impact news that happened. Uh, that was the October 6th, I think. And yeah, let's anyway, let's uh, run through the process behind all that. It was a very, very clean trade. So let's look at it. So firstly, if you look at my screen, this was the initial move. This is the move that I do not believe that anyone can predict. So of course I did not trade this. Um, I trade what, what goes on afterwards, right? So as you hear, we have the data high and the data low. What you do is you mark it out as liquidity and then you wait for a sub run above either one of these highs or lows, okay? So in this case, we ran the data low However, it's important that I have found the most, most success um, on the five minute and above time frame for this. Some of my entries are even on the 15 minute time frame when trading the data uh, lows and highs. This was done on the five minute time frame. And what I marked out was the data low that was swept on the five minute time frame. Okay. You don't want to, you don't want to do this on the one minute time frame or two or three. I prefer the five and above, preferably the five or the 15. That's what I've executed the most on. I've done a few on the smaller ones, but this was on a five minute. So we swept the data low, right? And we form a five minute Fibonacci gap. This is the first Fibonacci gap that we form, okay? There was an inversion Fibonacci gap right here, but that would not have gotten hit but we have a five minute fair value gap. So really all I did was wait for price to come back down into this fair value gap. And then I placed my order, you know, my buy limit. And then I targeted the data high. Firstly, whenever there's a very, very high impact news event, there's a huge inefficiency that needs filling. Okay. And it often sweeps the low and then goes to the high or sweeps the high and then goes to the low. So I wait for the low or high to be swept. And then I wait for uh, some sort of aggressive move in the opposite direction, indicating that, okay, we are probably going to take out the high. And then I take the PDRA that was created, right? In this case, this was a perfect five minute fair value gap. In my opinion, I'm perfectly fine with having my stop below this low here. That's what I did. Targeted the data high and it went perfectly, right? But as you know, I, my model is what I call the delivery model. I've taught this on this channel. And the reason why I was so confident in this play was because the 
a uh, high impact news event that happened made price tap into this one hour for bag gap. So not only did I have my data low liquidity sweep, we were also delivering from a higher time frame period, right? So that just adds to my confirmation. I, that, that gives me more confidence that this play is going to work out. Hey, so that's what I did. And this was how it looked. That was the final play. Um, it was beautiful, in my opinion. Uh, this could be a setup that I would take even without the data low sweep. Um, but the data low sweep just added to my confidence. I became, I, I, you know, this was a very, very high probability setup, in my opinion. You don't need a, a higher time frame delivery for this model to work, though. Although that's what I do because I never trade anything without some sort of delivery on a higher time frame. But uh, I actually found some, some older uh, plays of mine that I had taken pictures of. This was on CPI. And as you can see, the first bearish PDA rate that formed was this five minute fair value gap here, which I took. And then for this, in this case, because um, the CPI per was perched here, I think it was actually purged here, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, but because we did not go lower straight after the liquidity run, um, I targeted, uh, I just targeted in turn liquidity, okay? Uh, because the data low was so, so, so far away, and I did not want to sit in a trade for that long. So I targeted in turn liquidity. And I believe I had a few more. Here it is. We had a CPI high. Was before we swept the high, we swept the low. Uh, so we sweep the high and then we go lower, right? I think in this case, because we had already swept the CPI high, I probably targeted this uh, liquidity right here because I know for a fact that I took the play number two and not the first one. I don't know why, uh, but this will say fine play, CPI high swept. We take it down lower with displacement. Perfect, right? And we have one more here, um, right? The high was swept somewhere. I'm not sure why. It might be this one right here that was swept. And then if you notice, we had two five-minute Ferrari gaps right here. But what I do is when I trade normal Ferrari gaps, I either target, I, I place my entry on the first one 99% of the time, and then I include the second one in my stop loss. And if that's too far away, I put my stop loss at the 50% level of the second for Vega. Okay. So I hope you understood. It is not the most difficult uh, setup at all. Keep in mind that it has a way higher probability with a higher time frame delivery. Uh, but generally, what you want to see is a sweep of the high impact news, NFP, CPI, and unemployment rate. And then you target the opposite data low or high. And if that has already been swept, you just target internal liquidity. Just like you would do in any other model, or at least in most of ICT's models. Um, so yeah, keep in mind that this has the higher success rate on the five minute time frame and above. Most of my plays that I've executed on high impact news are placed on the five minute time frame, not below. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. This is how I trade the high impact news. Um, I believe that nobody should try to predict where the initial big move is going. Uh, you might as well go into the casino and throw it all on red. It's the same thing in my eyes. Um, so I will not condone that at all. But this setup right here is a very, very high probability play. I execute it every single time. Now, of course, it can fail just like any other setup, and it will, but it has a higher probability of winning than losing if executed correctly, and that's all I need. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new, and maybe next time there's a high impact news event, try and demo it, and tell me in the comments how, how if it worked, if it didn't, did you do any... Did you have any mistakes? Did you notice anything? Tell me in the comments. Uh, yeah. So thank you for watching. And until I see you next time, uh, stay blessed and bye-bye.